Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kenya. Thank you so much for stopping by. For today's video, I will be talking about how I studied for the DAT. This has been a much requested video and I honestly hesitated to make this video because I do not think that the way that I studied for the DAT is the way to do it. But I still wanna share for all of those pre-dental students that are like me and had very limited amount of time to study and just have no other choice. I just wanna make this video to let you know that there is hope, you can still do this. I'm gonna share what I did but if you have a lot of time to study if you have months to study if you want the perfect schedule if, if you want to score 25 plus on your dat i do not think this is a video for you this is very like last minute i don't have any other choice i have to take the dat in a month what do i do i'm going to share what i did so again this is not the perfect schedule, but I'm hoping that it's helpful for any of you that don't have a choice. So please just take everything with a grain of salt. Everybody is different. This worked for me, but again, it might not work for you. So please just take into consideration how you learn, how you do better in tests and all of that. And before I do start, I also do want to quickly mention, I have partnered with DAT Bootcamp to provide you a discount. You can use code Kenya Studies and you'll get $70 off your DAT Bootcamp subscription. I know applying for the DAT and then buying materials to study is not cheap at all so i'm really excited to have this discount code for you let me know in the comments if you're using it and let's get started so first i'm going to share my dat scores i've already shared them in my video that i made about my stats but i'll just quickly retouch them just so we know where we're at so my academic average was a 19 biology a 20 general chemistry 20 organic chemistry 18 perceptual ability 22 quantitative reasoning 21 reading comprehension 18 and survey of natural sciences, I got an average of a 19. So to begin with, how long did I study? I studied for three weeks. That is all the time that I took to study. However, I did take like one or two full length tests like a month before I started studying. And then I took another test maybe two weeks after that, but it wasn't very consistent. So, but consistently when I was like, I'm studying for the DAT, it was three weeks and the reason that i did this was because i was still taking organic chemistry i took my final for organic chemistry two up until may and as you know the dat has ochem in it so i wanted to make sure to be done with ochem so that i can then take the dat also i wanted to apply early everybody kept saying you need to apply early play early so, you know the first day that you can apply to in the school at least when i was doing it was june 1st so i finished my classes in may and then I had scheduled my DAT for the 21st of May. And I have that number like engraved in my head because I remember I would tell my friends, do not call me, I'm not going out until after the 21st. So that's the reason that I only had those three weeks. I did think about pushing it back, but then if I pushed it back, I wasn't going to apply June 1st. And that's just something that I really, really wanted to do. So I took the risk. I said, I'm just gonna give it my all for these three weeks. So anyways, let's get into each section. I'm gonna put the scores here of how I started and then the actual DAT. So this is what I did. I would do the same thing three days and just repeat, repeat, repeat until my test day came. So the first day, I would wake up early, take a full length test. The DAT was scheduled at eight. I would make sure to wake up at seven, whatever I was gonna do the real day of the test and do the exact same thing. At eight, I made sure to be sitting down, ready to take the test, and I would start it right at eight. And I would do everything as if it were the real test. I never turned off the timer. I also made sure it was quiet. So I would take the full length test. I would also take the 30 minute break that you get in the middle. And then I would come back and continue. What I love about DAT Bootcamp is that it's exactly the same as if it were the real thing. Like everything, the buttons, the periodic table that you get, the calculator, everything is very, very similar. When you go to take the real thing, it's super easy because you already know how to work everything. So that's one thing that I really, really like about DAT Bootcamp. So that's what I would do the first day. So that would take like five hours, however long the DAT takes. And once I was done, I would take a little break, maybe like a 30 minute break, maybe have lunch, come back, review everything. 
it would usually take me the rest of that first day and then a whole other day to, to finish reviewing everything i would make sure to every single question i was looking at it i was like if i got it right i would make sure that i actually knew the answer and why i got it right if i got it wrong i would make sure to read the explanation and then if i still didn't understand that explanation i would go to youtube youtube is like the best resource but usually the explanation on dat bootcamp that they provided was fine for me and i would not take notes i would just read and try to remember at first i did start taking notes but i realized that that took way too long there's just so much material that there was no way that it was going to be efficient so i definitely do not recommend for you to take notes so that second day i would finish maybe like in the evening i would be done reviewing the whole exam and then i would also pay attention to the sections that would tell me in each of the sections there's also other sections within it that tell you like oh you need to work on this you, you are doing good on this part so i would focus on the parts that it would tell me that i wasn't doing good and i would write it down so this is what i would do for biology but it was kind of the same for the other sections as well i would write down the topic and then go to biobytes the way that i got a 20 in biology was because of biobytes i swear biobytes is so so helpful you can see so the first six tests in what i showed you i'll put it again the first six tests i did not do biobytes i was just trying to read the chapters and memorize everything in the chapter and then that spent a whole day just doing biobytes biobyte all day and you can see the difference from test six to test seven i didn't score anything higher than a 15 believe me it was very discouraging i was like i don't think i'm gonna get a good score for biology but you can see the change that i went to an 18 after i started doing biobytes so I swear by BioBytes. If you're not doing them right now, you need to start doing them. They're so, so helpful, I promise. So that's what I did for biology, BioBytes. For Gen Chem, I did the same thing. I would review the practice test, everything that I did. And if I wasn't doing good in a certain area, then I would go and set some time apart and just work on that to make sure I would learn and actually retain that information. And then the same thing for OCHEM. You can see in my scores, OCHEM was always my weakest section, even in school. It's just so, so hard for me. There's so many structures and reactions and it was just, I felt like it was too, too much for me. But to be honest, while I was studying for OCHEM, I, I did not think I was gonna get a good score either, but I just did my best. I tried to not get discouraged and just keep going, keep going, because everybody does tell you that you feel like you don't know anything and it's so true. And honestly, I'm grateful for that 18 that I got in OCHEM because OCHEM is just so, so hard for me. And I know that some people just, it just clicks and they get it and they understand it, but I was not one of those people. I did a bunch of flashcards and again, just look at the sections that I wasn't doing good and try to get better at those. But that is basically what I did. For reading, I didn't study. I would just do the full length test and that's the only practice that I got for reading. To be honest, I felt like I was gonna do really good in the reading. Everybody kept saying that it was easier on the real thing and I might've gotten too confident and when I was doing the real thing, I just could not focus. There was this girl typing next to me and then behind me there was someone just moving their chair around and you could hear everything. And I'm the type of person that needs like silence to concentrate when you're doing a test. It was just really, really hard. So I ended up with an 18, which was so disappointing because I felt like I was gonna do good. So I think that that was just like on me that I just couldn't focus during the real thing. But I do think that the level of difficulty was about the same as the real one. But what I did was I read the questions first, maybe I read maybe five questions first, and then I would go and read the whole thing. If it happened that as I was reading that I remember, oh, this was one of the questions, I would go and mark it down. I know some people say like search and destroy, just read the question and try to find keywords, but that didn't work for me. That took too much time. So it's, to me, it was just easier to read the questions first and then read the whole thing. And then if you want, you can highlight stuff. I definitely highlighted like dates, names, and just like events, important things that I think would be one of the questions. And that definitely helped during my practice tests, at least um, I felt like I was doing good in the practice tests. And then in the real thing, like I said, it was just a matter that I just couldn't focus during the real thing. And then QR, this one, my score surprised me. I did not think I was gonna score well for QR either because I was, as you can see, my practice test 
the highest that I got was a 17. To be honest, I do think that DAT bootcamps questions are a lot harder, but it might be a good thing because if you understand those, then it, you will definitely understand the ones on the, on the real DAT. So what I'm gonna say about QR is do not get discouraged if you're scoring low because you will probably score higher on the real thing. For QR, I did the same thing as for the other science subjects. I would look at the sections that I wasn't doing good at and then I would go and watch a couple of the lecture videos that DAT Bootcamp provides regarding those sections so that I could understand a little bit better. But usually the explanations were super helpful. And then PAT. For the PAT, I honestly did not struggle that much. I felt like it was my favorite part. I really liked it. I felt like a little challenge, like a game. So I really enjoyed doing PAT. I didn't study for it as much as I would like to, but I ended up with um, with a good score in my opinion. I was very happy with my score. So what I did for the PAT is, as right when it started, I would skip to the third section of the PAT, which was the angle ranking. For this one, I do feel like you need a fresh set of eyes because if you do it as it goes in order, um, I, the, the first one is keyhole, then it's top front end, and then it's angle ranking. I feel like your eyes by then are a little tired. So I definitely recommend to do the angle ranking first. I would continue along that order after the angle ranking. Just look at it really fast and then mark your answer. If you start looking at it too much, then you're gonna start second guessing yourself. And I found that I would do that at first when I first started studying. And then I realized, okay, I'm not gonna spend more than a couple of seconds on each one. And if this one seems a little similar, I would just squint a little bit or try to do one of the strategies that DAT Bootcamp shows you. I also went on YouTube and look at the strategies for all of these. So I definitely recommend when you're studying for the PAT, go and look for, for example, keyhole strategy or cube counting strategy, and that will help you. So, okay, so going back, so angle ranking first, and then I did the hole punching. For hole punching, I would do the little like tic-tac-toe um, lines, and that really helped me. I'm gonna link the videos to the ones that I use so that you can look at them and go more in depth. Um, but I definitely did that. It doesn't take a long time for you to just do all of the lines before you start that section so that it can be good, ready to go. And then for the cube counting, I also did the chart where you just count all of the cubes. I'm gonna also link the video. You count all of the cubes because you get like five questions regarding the same shape. Sometimes it's less but usually like four or five. So I would just count all of the cubes and then mark it down so that when I get to the questions, I already have the number. So when you get the first new figure, it is gonna take a little bit of time, but then for the next couple other questions, you're already gonna have the number down and it's gonna be super easy. For pattern folding, the trick is to look at the shapes. I would just look at the shapes and then look at the options that they give you. And sometimes they'll have shapes that isn't even on the real thing and it's just about crossing off the ones that don't have the shape. And then after I was done with pattern folding, I would go back to the keyhole. And then the last one was top front end. That one was my worst section. It was super hard. I, this one I do feel it was a little bit easier on the real thing than the AT Bootcamp. But I, for that one, I would just watch and rewatch the explanation videos and it was just, they couldn't get in my head. It was so hard for me. But the explanation videos definitely help on everything so i feel like that is the reason that i improved my scores as i was studying those three weeks and then also in the excel document that i showed you you can see that i did end up taking all of the tests and then i even retook one and you can see how high the scores are on this one so i do not recommend to retake the test because i would remember the answer and i would just choose that answer even though it was like so long ago so i don't recommend to retake i believe that dat bootcamp provides more tests that you can buy or there's also dat booster if you were not of the tests i would recommend doing that instead of retaking so that is it for how i study for the dat i know it's kind of crazy i crammed everything into three weeks and i ended up with semi average scores but hey it got me into six schools so I, again, I just wanted to share this just in case if you're in a similar situation to what I was in. And I really did not have a life during those three weeks. I literally studied from when I woke up to when I went to bed. It would probably be like 12 to 14 hours a day. 
And again, I would just repeat first day, take the test, second day review, and then the third day, go back and work on the areas that you're weak in that you need help with. Still don't get it, go to YouTube, go to Google. If you need to find a tutor, anything that you, you need to do to get it right. And just continue studying BioBytes. Remember, it's your savior for biology. And that is it. So if you still don't have DAT Bootcamp, remember to use my code KINESTUDIES for 20% off. I hope this video was super helpful. I really enjoy making these videos for you, hoping um, to help you along the way of your journey. And hopefully you can learn from my mistakes too. Don't do what I did if you can study for a lot longer, but I'm wishing you the very, very best. I hope you kill the DAT and you get way, way better scores than I did. So that is it for today. Make sure to like this video if it was helpful. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll be uploading more pre-dental series and then also more study with me's and vlogs. If you're not already also, make sure to follow me on my Instagram and TikTok. It is at Kenya Studies where I post more content and study motivation. Thank you again so much for watching. Wishing you the very, very best and I'll see you guys on next video. Bye.